Uh, I mean, we've spoken about the numerous benefits of Taproot multiple times on this podcast already. (laughs) And and, and this conversation totally uh, confirms it. I mean, Taproot is just mind-bloggingly awesome. So how the hell are we going to implement it? How how are we going to activate it? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. How are we going to implement it? Or how are we going to activate it? So the consensus is around BIP8 something, basically. Um, BIP8 is uh, the successor to BIP9. Uh, I guess we're counting backwards now. Um, <laughs> so BIP9, uh, BIP9 was what we used for SegWit. But also, a lot of people don't remember this. It was successfully used in a previous activation for check sequence verify. And that one went off without a hitch, which is why I think no one remembers it. Um, so, so BIP9, uh, was a way to activate softworks and, and actually also activate softworks in parallel. Uh, but it used, uh, it used a, a parameter we call median time passed, which is the median of the median timestamp of the last 11 blocks. But because it's based on time, um, there's a lot of little funky things that can happen. A lot of weird edge cases around the start and the timeout time uh, that that are avoidable if we change to using a block height. So BIP8 is uh, the one of the biggest changes in BIP8 is that instead of using MTP, it uses the block height for everything. So now you can say, you know, uh, instead of saying the the soft work will begin, you start signaling for a soft work on this date at this time, which, uh, could be slightly different because if, if, you know, with stale blocks and all that, the median time pass could actually not be, um, uh, it can change on, on a, uh, for a particular block height. But with block height, you know, on block X, regardless of stale blocks, block height X is always that. So, um, BIP8 is more, uh, clean in that way. BIP8 also introduces some other parameters. Uh, the most contentious one is called locking on timeout. And, and basically what this means is that when the software times out, instead of failing and not activating, uh, nodes can, can nodes will activate it. And it does this by forcing miners to signal in the last signaling period. Uh, th- so there's a now, there's also a new state where, uh, the, at the very last signaling period, if locking on timeout is true, then miners must signal for the soft work, uh, up to the threshold. So this would allow a, um, this would allow if there was a simultaneous, uh, locking on timeout false, to also activate at the same time. And, and this parameter has been what has been most contentious, uh, about whether we should use locking on timeout true from the start or whether we should do it locking on timeout false and then see what happens and then later decide if we want to do locking on timeout true. Uh, there are a lot of arguments for and against it. Um, I have been, I would say consistent in my position that we should start with doing locking on timeout false. Uh, what we do afterwards is dependent on what the outcome of the start was. And so that actually leads us into the latest idea, uh, which we're calling speedy trial. And, and the idea here is we can do a really short, uh, locking on timeout false, uh, deployment. So this would use uh, a start time of soon and a timeout time of three months after the start. So this would, you know, if it succeeds, it'll succeed quickly. If it fails, it'll fail quickly. Uh, this is, uh, in contrast to the normal deployment time of, of one year between start and timeout. So with speedy trial, we would have this shortened signaling time. Uh, but then we, you know, because Three months is not that long, and if the start time is or start height is really soon, uh, not everyone might upgrade. We add a new parameter called the minimum activation height, and and it, it's as the name suggests, the height that the minimum height that activation can occur. So with speedy trial, what we're planning 
is to have the start height be fairly soon, um, timeout height be about three months after that, and then the minimum activation height is six months after the start. So if in speedy trial the first signaling period reaches the threshold, then we got to wait all six months before it activates. If, uh, I mean, either way, we all, we have to wait the six months for it to activate if it activates. But by the timeout height, we will know whether it has failed or not. So that's the current, that's the current proposal that is gaining some traction, although there is also, um, some more debating around other things related to speedy trial.